Hi everyone, this is Rachel from ExploreKidTalk.com. Thanks for stopping by. If you've seen some of my other videos, I'm glad you decided to come and watch what else I have. If you're new, please remember to hit the subscribe button below. That way you'll get updates on toddler development and child activities and ways to help your toddler and your ch children at home. So today we're gonna talk a little bit about pacifiers. I've had a lot of questions and discussions with parents over the years on how do I get my toddler to get rid of their pacifier? How do I lose the pacifier? Now, that being said, I do believe, and it is stated, that the earlier you can get rid of the pacifier, the better it will be. It will be easier on your child and it will be easier on you as the parent. As they get older, their attachment starts to build and they start to grow a dependency on a pacifier. So before we get into that, we're going to discuss the pacifier pros and cons and all the different benefits of a pacifier and when it's really important to then stop using a pacifier. Now, there will be a lot of information in this post so what I want you to do is there's a link down below that will have the cliff notes of everything that I'm talking about in this video. Remember cliff notes? I used to love cliff notes. So I want you to download, download and print the guide below so that you can have everything I'm discussing here and you can have that as an easy reference guide that will help you distinguish which method is best for your family how you want to get rid of the pacifier, when you feel is the best time to do it, that guide will help you do all of that. You can also read the article that I wrote, and in the article, it will have everything that I'm discussing here. It also has the best pacifiers to use for different babies. So if you, if you have a newborn or you're pregnant at the moment and you're thinking about pacifiers or you don't know what to use, that post will help you determine what pacifier might be best for your little one. It talks about pacifiers that have more of a shape of a nipple, that em emulate breastfeeding, ones to use if you're bottle feeding, ones to use if you have a preemie baby, different pacifiers for different reasons. So that list will help break down the pacifier to use. Everything I'm going to discuss now our pacifier pros and cons, and then the best tips for mothers and proven ways to help get rid of the pacifier when that time comes. So right now, let's talk about pacifier pros. So the pacifier pros, one, and if you look at the picture, you can follow along with what I'm saying. So the first thing that the pacifier helps is really to soothe the baby. Babies are fussy and cry all the time. It doesn't necessarily mean that they're hungry. They may just wanna suck. Babies are born with the need to suck. And so by giving them a pacifier, it helps soothe them. It helps meet that need of sucking, but you're not feeding them when they don't need to be fed. And that's something that you'll learn and see and determine if they're really hungry, but if they just ate 10 minutes ago, and they ate a good amount, chances are they may not want to eat, they may just want to suck. So using a pacifier, that's a perfect opportunity to use a pacifier. It's also very easy and convenient. If you do use pacifiers, I recommend keeping a few. Get the same one, the same brand, and keep them throughout your house because when one drops and you have to clean it, you still want to have another one available for your baby to be using. So if you give a pacifier, it also reduces the need to put their thumb in their mouth. They'll, they then won't want to really thumb suck, they'll have the pacifier instead. So if you want to avoid that, using a pacifier is a good way to avoid thumb sucking. Also, now this was important for me. It, this is not proven, but there is a correlation and studies have shown that using a pacifier helps reduce the risk of SIDS. Now again, I said it's not proven, but there is a strong correlation between how a baby uses a pacifier and sucking 
that it prevents them or it helps to prevent SIDS. Now for me, a strong correlation is to prevent SIDS was enough reason to use it early on. In infancy and when they were a baby, that's enough reason for me to use it. If you, you agree, that could be a reason to use, use the pacifier. Now, all of these pros are really for infants and babies under eight, nine months. After that, these pros aren't there so much anymore because at eight, nine months, 10 months, a year, a child doesn't have the need to suck like they did a few months earlier. They also are not at the risk of SIDS anymore. And different things change as they get closer to a year old. As they get closer to their first birthday, these benefits are no longer benefits anymore. So I want to discuss some of the cons. So pacifier cons, these cons that I'm going to discuss are really after the age of one, one and a half, where it's considered prolonged use of a pacifier. So these cons don't really show themselves when you have an infant. These are after the child's first birthday. So one of the cons is they get ear infections. They're sucking so much in the liquid, they get increased amounts of ear infections when they continue to use the pacifier. They also have shown dental problems. If I've spoken to dentists, and when they see a two-year-old using a pacifier, two-year-old, a three-year-old, they say, you, you need to stop. Because a common thing that happens is they have misalignment of the teeth. So you're starting, the child is starting to have their teeth move where they might not have done that before. And the dentist could see changes in the roof of their mouth. These are things that you don't really want to happen and that could be prevented if you stop the pacifier earlier on. Another con is delayed language development or language at all. If your child is using the pacifier throughout the day and they're walking around, they're playing with the pacifier in their mouth, they're not talking. They may yell or they may make some sounds, but they're not really talking to you where they might be if there wasn't something in their mouth. It just allows them to keep it in their mouth and not, and not talk or not ask for things. They might just yell and make some sounds, but not really be talking to you. Now, when I say this, I'm not saying that the child isn't able to talk. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that it just makes it easy not to talk when you have something in your mouth. If you're drinking or eating, you're going to wait until you're done before you start a conversation. So if the baby, if the toddler has a pacifier in their mouth, they may just be content with keeping the pacifier in their mouth instead of having a conversation with you. You always want to encourage conversation and language as often as possible. And you can watch my language development video to learn more on how to encourage language with your toddlers. And the big key after one and a half is that they've now developed a dependency on it. This is something that they're so used to and they feel that they need to have it all the time. When you get rid of a pacifier early on, they don't have that dependence. The dependence isn't there yet. Sorry. The, the dependence isn't there yet. So by getting rid of it early on, you can avoid these cons that I've mentioned. So now I want to discuss some tips for weaning them. If you are past the point of a year old, of a year and a half, and you're ready to get rid of the pacifier, these tips will help you. These are proven tips from other parents that have used all different methods and they find the method that's best for their family, for their child, and which one will work. So with my kids, I stopped the pacifier seven months, seven, eight months, we stopped. And that was just what we chose to do. I knew the, the cons and the benefits and it was just easier to stop then before they built any relationship and dependency with wanting to have the pacifier. 
So if possible, if you can stop by before you're old, that will really benefit you and your child. That's the best, best way to do it. So if you're past that point, here are some tips that will really help you get rid of the pacifier. Now, whatever method you use, whatever you choose to do, the most important thing is to be consistent. Everybody in the family, everybody in the house has to be on the same page. If mom is home all day and says, no pacifier, no pacifier, no pacifier, dad comes home from work and gives them the pacifier, or grandma babysits the next day and gives the pacifier, nothing's gonna matter. Then you're just going to have more frustration from both you and your child because there's nothing that's said. And your child is smart enough to know who will give them the pacifier and who won't. And they'll just go to the other person. You don't want that. So once you decide that it's time to give up the pacifier, everybody that's with the child needs to be on the same page. They need to agree. They need to know that this is what's happening. So that's first. So one method that you can use is cold turkey. And that's just with anything else, that's it. You decide you're done, you take them all out, the toddler says goodbye to them, and you deal with however the toddler responds. The tantrums, the upsetment, maybe not sleeping, whatever it may be, and you just deal with it for a few days, and then it's done. That method doesn't always work for everybody. Sometimes the parents have a hard time with that, and it just doesn't work, and that's okay. That's okay. The other methods that I'm going to discuss are all under the umbrella of slow weaning, which is the opposite of cold turkey. So the other methods that I'm going to discuss are different ways that you can slow wean, but they're all still taking a little bit more time than going cold turkey. So the first one is they can almost exchange it for something else comforting. You can have them go to the store and pick out a new stuffed animal or go to build a bear and have them make their own and you can exchange it for the pacifier. So they're getting something else to sleep with and hold and have as comfort and getting rid of the pacifier. And I say this because we established that now your child is over one and a half, that then they can have a stuffed animal in the bed. I would never recommend that for a baby. So, but if they're at this point, they can then have a stuffed animal and they may really want something they can hold and have be comforting to them and get rid of the pacifier. Another one is giving it away. Now there's a few different levels of giving it away. You can give it to a nephew or a cousin and say, oh look, we have a new baby cousin. Let's give all the pacifiers to her. She needs them now and try to get your toddler to give away the pacifiers to a baby. Now, I wouldn't recommend giving the pacifiers to a sibling, a new baby sibling, excuse me, giving it to a sibling because then they still feel that the pacifiers are in the house, why can't I have it? It's better to get them out of the house to somebody else. Now, along with giving it away, a lot of other parents have done during holidays. They give it to Santa, they give the pacifiers to the Easter Bunny, they give the pacifiers to Santa. So your toddler will get the pacifiers together. This allows them to have a little bit of control over it. It helps them feel that some of it is up to them. So a toddler, if your toddler needs to have that sense where they have a little bit of control, this might work better for you. So they get it together and they give it to Santa. They could leave a note, Santa, these are for you, for other children, give them to the Easter Bunny if you discuss these things in your house, and then they get something in return from Santa or the Easter Bunny. Now, another way, along magical figures, they have, people have said the Binky Fairy. You can look it up and it's just the same as Santa or the Easter Bunny. You have the Binky Fairy, which only comes to get your binkies. The binky fairy knows that you're now too old, you're a big boy, you're a big girl, and you don't need the binkies anymore. So you leave the binkies for the binky fairy, 
And in return, you get a big boy, big girl gift. That way they're getting something in return and they chose to give it up to the Binky Fairy. And the Binky Fairy only comes when the child is old enough to get rid of the binkies. So that's along the magical figures as well. Another one that has worked for many parents is they change the desire of the pacifier. And that means that you could put a little hole in the pacifier or you start to cut off the tips. And I've seen many children, when the desire is changed, they no longer want it. So they'll, they'll have it for a while, but then they eventually just gave it up because it wasn't the same. So if you had something and it was completely changed, you would no longer want it either. So over time, you cut little holes and you put a little hole in it or you cut off the tip and keep cutting it so that the pacifier is no longer the way it started out. It's now much smaller and it doesn't give them the same effect. The desired effect is now gone. And that has worked for a lot of parents. I've seen that work because it's no longer satisfying to the toddler and then they're just done with it. Now, whatever you choose to do, I did say be consistent. And once you get rid of them, however way you do it, if you do a cold turkey or Santa or a nephew, however you choose to get rid of them, make sure they're gone because toddlers are very good at finding things that we thought were gone or put away, make sure they're gone. Don't put them away, just really get them out of the house, make sure they're gone. And that, that way you're not gonna have to go through it again because if your toddler finds them again, you're gonna go backwards and then you're gonna have to rep repeat the process again and it may not work as well because now they know that, oh, it's still here in the house, so why am I gonna get rid of it? Toddlers know more than you think they might. So you want to make sure if you're telling them you're getting rid of them, the pacifiers are really out of the house. So I hope these tips have helped you and you can find a strategy that works best for you and your family to get rid of the pacifiers. If you have any questions, please feel free to write to me. I'd be happy to answer your questions. I'd be happy to do another video if that would help you as well. Remember before you leave, to download and print your guide to get rid of the pacifiers. It will help you have an easy reference right there and it discusses everything that I mentioned today. So that way you can see what you wanna do. So I hope this helps you. Please remember to hit the subscribe button below so you don't miss any other developmental videos and I'll see you soon. Thanks so much, bye.